Hey students, uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, I told you yesterday I was going to follow up a video that was titled uh, Adrenergics versus Anticholinergic Drugs with a breakdown of the specific systems, uh, meaning sympathomimetics and parasympatholytics. And I'm going to do that for you now. This is going to be two separate videos, uh, one over the sympathetic nervous system, the other on parasympathetic nervous system. When you're studying your drugs, especially especially these uh, classifications of drugs, it's easiest if you will break it down into three different segments. And if you'll break it down into three different segments, it will help you recognize some of these drugs and the different names that are the different classifications that they may fall under. Okay, so you see up here I have system, neurotransmitter, and receptors. And if you'll break down these drugs and recognize that all of these terms mean the same thing then it'll point you in the right direction of knowing which drugs we're talking about and why we would give them okay so the first system we're going to talk about is the sympathetic nervous system so the sympathetic nervous system okay now if we give a drug that wants to create the same effect that the sympathetic nervous system does, then we would give a, a sympathomimetic. We're going to mimic it. So I like, to, I like to tell students if you'll think about it as sympathomimetic, we understand that the name is sympathomimetic, but if you'll think mimic, it will help you. So the name of this drug, the classification of these drugs, or sympatho mimetics. Okay. Now, when we talk about neurotransmitters, you have to know the neurotransmitter at the effector site when you're talking about these nervous systems. So we're not we're not talking about the neurotransmitter at the ganglionic synapse. We're talking about at the effector site, and that should make sense because that's the neurotransmitter we want to mimic because we give the drugs locally so we inhale we put the we put the drugs right where the end effector site is and so for us when we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system and we're talking about the effector site and you're talking about the neurotransmitter at the effector site then we know we're talking about norepinephrine now i'm going to shorthand that because i'll run out of room if i don't but we're going to give norepi now norepi when the sympathetic nervous system lights up in each of us. Your body seems like it's flooded with adrenaline. If you've ever done anything exciting or gotten super nervous or super scared, then that flooding, that feeling is the adrenaline flooding your, your body. And that's a response of norepi. Okay? So when we talk about classifications based off of the term norepi, then we have our drugs that we call adrenergics. Okay, so these are our adrenergic drugs. Now the last one here is receptors. And you have to understand what receptors we're binding to so that when you hear these terms, you understand, right? So in the sympathetic nervous system, neurotransmitters nor epi, and it seeks out three different receptors to bind to. The first one is beta-1, beta 2s and the alpha receptors now if you'll remember this then you'll be able to remember what those three receptors do okay if you remember that you have one heart okay so you only have one heart you have two lungs so beta 1 affects your heart causes tachycardia increased blood pressure causes the contractility of the ventricles to be stronger that's the effect of the beta 1s. The beta 2 receptors are responsible for smooth muscle relaxation. So now we're talking about airway relaxation in the lungs associated with the smooth muscles. And then the alpha is our vasoconstricting properties. So I'm just going to put vaso vasoconstrict by the alpha. And everybody says, well, this is the hard one. How to remember that one, Joe? Uh, well, if you imagine that this was a piece of rope or a twine 
and you were to pull it in opposite directions, that circle right there would get smaller. It would, get, it would become tight around something, right? And so if you give a drug that will af affect the alpha receptors, then it will cause vasoconstriction, make the vessels get smaller, okay, by pulling on those two opposite ends, okay? So now for us, most of the drugs in this category, they can affect one, two, or all three of these receptors, but for modern day respiratory pharmacology, the two drugs we primarily give in this um, is uh, levibuterol and albuterol. I said that in my video uh, prior to this. They are primarily beta 2, okay? So you're going to see the receptor and then a word that follows the receptor. And that word that follows is agonist. So if you have a beta 2 agonist, then you're talking about giving a drug that will create the like effect on the beta 2s, and we call those beta 2 agonists. Okay, now if you give a drug that creates the opposite effect or blocks the effect, then you would use the term antagonist. But that's not what we're talking about when we talk about our sympathomimetics. We're talking about drugs that create the same effect as the sympathetic nervous system. We're talking about drugs that mimic the neurotransmitter norepi. And we're talking about drugs that initiate the same response when it finds a receptor as what norepi would. So that would make that an agonist. So you can have a beta 2 agonist. You can have um, just a beta agonist. And that would be nonspecific to beta 1 or beta 2s. You can also have an alpha agonist. Okay, and I'm going to talk about that one uh, separately here in just a second. Now, when you're talking about Sympath the sympathomimetics or your sympathetic nervous system, you, f you first of all have to understand, okay, so all of those drugs, these drugs that fall, that can be called any of these, okay? I, I get it by name now, but I, I still don't know what they do. Well, you have to understand what this system does in the body when it lights up, okay? And so the effects here are that all of these drugs will lead to, okay, Increase in cardiac function, bronchodilation, and a decrease in mucus production. All right, now it says increase heart function there, and it's there because that's what the sympathetic nervous system's effect is. So I include it on there. Now, some of the drugs that we're going to mention here have gotten very good at being beta 2 specific. And so they're, they, they have a very small beta 1 reaction. So not all of these drugs increase cardiac function. So don't, don't confuse, confuse me there. But if you take something like, like dopamine, that would fall as a sympathomimetic and it increases cardiac function. Okay, so gearing this towards respiratory therapy, and RT pharmacology. So we're going to focus primarily on bronchodilation and decreased mucus production. Now, all of these things sound like things we like, right? So if you like these things, you want to create this response in your patient, specifically bronchodilation and decreased mucus production, then that's going to put you in this category of drugs, sympathomimetics, adrenergic drugs, beta-2 agonist. Okay? Now, Let's talk real quick about a couple of drugs in these categories. So I'm just going to write right here, Saba, and I'm going to draw a line here, and I'm going to write Lava. So I'm just going to name a couple of them. As you can see, I don't have enough room to write all of them. I'm just going to give you the common ones that we commonly give in today's um, RT world. Okay, so. When you say SABA, first of all, what does SABA stand for? Well, it stands for short acting beta adrenergic. Now we understand what those terms mean. We understand short acting means it's gonna be quick. It's not gonna be one of your maintenance medications. It's gonna be a rescue drug. So a patient comes into the emergency room, acute asthma, they're bronchoconstricted, 
these drugs should be in the emergency room for you to administer to your patients. Okay, so the two primary examples I gave them to you previously, I'll give them to you again, is albuterol and levalbuterol. Now, if you go back and you're studying for your boards and you say, well, Joe, there was a lot more than just albuterol and levalbuterol on that list. You're right. It starts with norepi, epinephrine, dopamine. Those are, those are um, homogenous, um, not homogenous, endogenous catecholamines within our body that create these effects, okay? And then it went to isoproteranol and isoetherine, and then you have terbutylene, and then you have metaproteranol, and then you finally get down here to the selaginin agents where we're talking albuterol and levalbuterol, and you know levalbuterol as being Zopinex as the brand name, okay? So those are, those are your two common short-acting beta adrenergics. Now, the long-acting beta adrenergics is a growing list, okay? This started uh, back, I wanna say one of the first ones was salmeterol. This is a commonly seen lava, which is long-acting beta adrenergic, okay? Salmeterol is commonly seen uh, and, and administered with a corticosteroid in the drug Advair, but it's a long-acting beta adrenergic in with a corticosteroid. These are your maintenance drugs, so when you see lava, these drugs should not be in the emergency room. There's no reason for a status asthmaticus to come in and they're, they're, they're bronchoconstricted and you say, hey, go get me a long-acting beta adrenergic. That's not, that's, that's wrong. Okay, so short-acting in the emergency room, long-acting on the floors and to go home with the patients for maintenance therapy. Okay, now two other ones that you're commonly going to see. It is fermoterol and r fermoterol. Now you have to understand, you don't hear these names so much by their generic, these drugs by their generic names, you hear these more by their brand names. And so real quick, fermoterol is perforomist or in the DPI form, it's foradil. So Performist is, is an aqueous solution that we nebulize. Foradil is a DPI. And then r fermoterol is Bravana. Now, <clears throat> the long-acting beta adrenergics are given twice a day commonly. But there's other ones like Indicatorol that's a once-a-day long-acting beta adrenergic. That hasn't really made, you haven't seen that a lot in in the, the, the hospital setting yet, but it's, it, it may find its way there and you need to recognize that as a LABA also. Okay, so uh, that, that's it in a nutshell when you're talking about your sympathomimetics. Remember their system that they affect. They affect the sympathetic nervous system. That's why we call them sympathomimics. Sympathomimetics, okay? They mimic norepi which is, creates the same response, which is why they're classified as adrenergic drugs. They seek out and bind to these drugs specifically to beta-2 receptors. That's why we refer to them as a beta-2 agonist. That's why they're called short-acting beta adrenergics or long-acting beta adrenergics. Our short-actings are albuterol and levibuterol being Zopinex. Our long-acting, just to name a few, salmeterol, formoterol, arfermoterol, are our long-acting maintenance beta adrenergics. And all of these drugs, all of them, short-acting and long-acting, will all work to lead to bronchodilation and decreased mucus production. And they do that by increasing cyclic adenosine monophosphate, which, when it spells out, looks like CAMP. So they do so by uh, increasing camp. When you increase camp, you ultimately lead to smooth muscle relaxation and mast cell stabilization. If you can keep the mast cells stabilized, then you'll reduce the inflammatory response 
and that'll decrease your mucus production. If you re release smooth muscle constriction, then you'll lead to bronchodilation. Now, when are we gonna give these drugs? And I leave you with this. You always have to know your indications, and I'm not writing it on the board here. Okay, just commit this to memory right here. What's my indication for any of these drugs, our sympathomimetics, adrenergics, beta-2 agonists, your SABA or your LABAs, whatever you want to call them, what's your indication? Now, a common answer here, and it's a misconception, is the answer is a wheeze. The patient's wheezing, you give them a sympathomimetic. That's not always correct, and that's not your indication. Your indication for these drugs is smooth muscle relaxation in the presence of reversible airway obstruction. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Your indication is to achieve smooth muscle relaxation in the presence of reversible airway obstruction. All right, and the word reversible is important there, meaning if you give this drug, the muscles will dilate and relax. Okay, if somebody comes in with an aspirated peanut and you're going to hear a wheeze over that obstructed airway, th th these drugs, albuterol, levalbuterol, is not going to fix that. You've got to get the, the peanut out. Okay, um, if you get called to a room for a congestive heart failure patient, they have pulmonary edema, their alveoli are filled with fluid that's leaked out of the capillary beds and it's obstructed the airway. And the problem is the fluid. And you, you may hear this patient wheezing from that fluid, okay? Now, it may also sound like a crackle, but sometimes it presents with what they call a cardiac wheeze. And you're going to get called to give this patient a breathing treatment. And you may give them three, four, or five breathing treatments before you decide, this isn't working. We need to do something else. Well, the reason it's not working is because the patient doesn't have reversible airway obstruction due to smooth muscle constriction. They have airway obstruction in the presence of pulmonary edema. These drugs won't fix that, okay? They don't do anything for fluid. If your patient has pneumonia, these drugs don't, don't fix pneumonia, okay? So you gotta know your indications. Your patient has status asthmaticus and they use their inhaler three or four times a week at home. You go in there and respond to them and they have polyphonic wheezing, then absolutely give them a sympathomimetic and try to uh, relax their smooth muscle constriction. Okay, I hope this helps, guys. Um, if it's uh, if it does, then let me know. If it doesn't help and you need me to clarify something else uh, that that came out of this, then let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'll get you a video made. I uh, hope everybody has a great day and go be great.